Welcome to the Rockstar in Life podcast, where you learn the secrets to unleashing your inner rock star so you can make the world your stage. Hey, fellow rock stars in life, Dr. Dan here, and I've got with me Siri Shakti. Yeah. And today <laughs> we are going to be talking about a few things. One is what some call an empath or what's the other word for it? Em- uh, empathic. empathic. Yes. Empathic. Being an empathic person. thought I was going to butcher that and say it completely wrong or being a highly, se- it's kind of another way of saying a highly sensitive person. Now, when we say highly sensitive, we don't mean like, you know, they're sensitive to the touch or something, <laughs> or if they're like sensitive, like, you know, like, uh, If you make a joke and they get upset, (laughs) we don't mean that kind of sensitivity. And this is a big, some people call like a spectrum. Yes. Like they say there's different levels of how, you know, how empathic you are. Uh That's right. (laughs) How much of an empath you are um, or how highly sensitive you are. And some people differentiate between the two and say one is one, the other is the other. And then there's that spectrum yes. where you can be kind of in the middle of it. But we're going to kind of decipher it. We're going to go through it a little bit and give you um, some solutions if this is something that you know, you're know you challenged with, if it's something that you've had challenges with in your own life. I know both me and you, um, I, I've never really consider myself like, Hey, I'm an empath, you know, right? I never wore that badge. Um, but you know, you, when I asked you, I said, would you think I'm an empath? And you said, yes. (laughs) I'm like, Oh yes. (laughs) So I guess I've been labeled. Yes. You are an empathic. (laughs) So let's talk about that. Yes. And 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 let me guess, this is your favorite episode. Oh my gosh. Again, (laughs) my, my other favorite episode. I've said that like many times. This is your your 21st favorite episode. Each episode is my favorite. Nice. Yes. And before we get started, you know, I want to say that this is something that can be really beautiful in your life. I mean, it's, it's, um, you know, with, with anything in our lives, it can be a challenge, but also can be a blessing. So we'll be getting into, um, you know, all that information in a minute. But first, let me kind of give you an idea of what it means to be an empath. Well, let's use the dictionary, you know, explanation or whatever it was. I I looked it up and it said empath, plural noun, empaths, (laughs) chiefly in science fiction, a person with a paranormal ability to apprehend the mental or emotional state of another individual. Whoa. (laughs) That sounds like really cool and technical. Totally. So I got superpowers. (laughs) Well, I'll put it my way. I mean, let me give you my explanation. Go for it. You know, I'd say that being an empath is when you are really affected by other people's energies. You're you're sensitive enough that you have the ability to kind of like intuitively feel and perceive others with, you know, not only what they're they're feeling emotionally, but also maybe physical sensations that they're having, whether it be a headache or things like that. And, you know, your life, when, when you're sensitive or empathic, your life is really unconsciously influenced by others, by their their desires, their wishes, their their feelings, their moods. And you know, like, you know, I know for myself for a long time, even I, their health too. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes, very much. And, and I, I didn't, you know, same with you, Dan, I never really heard the word empath growing up, but I always remember feeling like very sensitive around other people. And, and it wasn't until I was an adult that I was able to really understand what that was um, and how I was affected by, other people and and pick up on on not only how they feel but also their intentions. Yeah, I had already uh, mastered. <laughs> I had already mastered it. Um, how to overcome it, you know, and right. how to prepare for it and what to do when it happens without even knowing, you know, what it was. <laughs> oh, that's so. Cool. It was kind of like a in, in a survival way. Yes, you know, it's like you could either grow and learn how to overcome something. And, you know, it's, it, it's like one of those things. I remember uh, one of our really good friends 
Uh, he's like an NLP, like master practitioner, teacher, trainer, and he like certifies people and all that stuff. And he's been doing it for, for many, many years. And I remember, um, he invited me to come speak to his group and I was talking to them about stuff and I thought I was, I was just like, you know, here's what I did to overcome this. And here's what I did, you know, when it came to, you know, marketing and sales and here's what I did for this. And he, he was labeling things like, see what Dan did was this. And he was like giving all these technical terms. And I'm like, nobody taught me this stuff. Wow. And I didn't even know you gave it a label or put it on the spectrum of labels. Right. And I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you just kind of intuitively knew and figured it out yourself. Yeah, well, it's yeah. like learning to walk. Yeah, you know, it's either you're going to learn to walk or you're just going to stay on the ground forever. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. That's interesting that you say that because I know I've told you many times, like I I want to be more in ma- nature, things like that, right? And I remember growing up. Um, I was a very social person. Like I, I love to be around people, but then I, I was, it was kind of like two opposites. Like one side of me wanted to be social, social butterfly, be around everyone and visit. But then when I needed to detach, I want to be like by myself and I go in my room and, you know, when I was real little, I'd spend so much time just playing alone and, and um, one of the big things for me is that would help me balance out is to get outside like in nature and, as a little girl. And I still very much have that need nowadays. So you just go out into the woods when you were a little girl? Oh my God, I would. Yes. Just frolic. And- no, no, no. <laughs> I, I'd go out into our backyard or our front yard and uh, we lived across the street from a school and I had this little hill with grass and I remember I'd roll down the hill and just like lay there and stare up at the sky and that was like so therapeutic for me and (laughs) well I know for me um, I'm trying to think when I was like younger younger I mean I used to skateboard a lot and get out I'd be outside a lot yeah but um, always for me as as far as I can remember um, going to the ocean was it for me you know and at the time we were in northern you know grew up in northern california so we'd have to drive like you know like an hour to either you know well an hour we would go to like uh what was that um shoot what was that beach called stinson no no uh growing up i mean i i always liked to go to like capitola or aptos that's where my parents always took me but that was like an hour and a half away it was like near it was a little past santa cruz um, but there was like a, a, another one that we would go to. I forgot, totally forgot where it is. Um, but I didn't like it as much and it was a little closer, but the waves like crashed down a lot harder and it was usually a lot colder and, and stuff, but that's, you know, I would just sit there at the ocean. I would just stare into the ocean and, yeah. you know, it'd be med, it would be, you know, meditative, med, meditative, meditative, <laughs> med- meditative for me, meditative, <laughs> meditative. Yeah. It would be like, uh, just like relaxing and I'd, I'd be like just feeling really great. And this is before I knew anything about yoga or meditation or anything yeah. like that. And uh, another thing for me was when I learned to, you know, to, to snowboard. And this is like, you know, I was in my, I think I was in my, maybe like 19, 20 or something. I can't remember how old I was, but yeah. we would go up to the snow. And then the very first time I was at the top of the hill, it was like the first time I like really experienced quiet. Wow. You know, like it was just, you know, like at night when you're, you're in bed and, and you know, there's no sound at all yeah. and then all of a sudden your ears kind of ring yes it, it's it was kind of like that but without the ringing and and it was really awesome wow. so like I, I would just sit up there at the top of the top of the mountain before I go down and just kind of relax and think of my future and oh my gosh that so sounds it was, so magical it was, it was very magical I want to go to the top of a snowy mountain and think about my future Let's can do we it. do it yep Let's <laughs> I mean it, it though <laughs> yeah yeah. Now, oh, one thing I want to ask you, though, um, as you brought this up about you wanted to be the social butterfly, just curious, um, being a social butterfly with people, was this like in big crowds that you wanted to be or were they in smaller groups? Actually, it was in smaller groups. Yeah. So yeah. it was in smaller groups. Because yeah. I'll say that for me, like um, during the summertime, I did my best when I wasn't having to go to school, yeah. public school. And I would like either, you know, whatever I was doing, skateboarding or, you know, for, for many years, I used to roller skate, you know, at the Golden Skate right. in uh, San Ramon, California, <laughs> back in my hometown, <laughs> shout out Golden Skate. I think it's still there. Doing some rexing. Doing some rexing, some shoot the ducks, some backwards <laughs> skating. Yep. 
Um, but I used to, I, I used to just like flourish there. Like, you know, people would like be like, oh man, you're such a great skater. And, you know, I'd be popular there, Yeah. but it was in small groups. It was just like a few people and stuff. And I mean, it was, there was a lot of people that, at the roller rink, but it was just fun and everybody was having fun. Yeah. Um, but you know, school, man, it was horrible. I had the hardest time in school and I would just sit there and, and, and I, we talked about this in, in what episode was that, um, you know, episode eight, you know, why homeschooling and, and other, other episodes as well. And I remember, you know, just in school, like I would sit there and just, I couldn't focus. Like the teacher would talk and I don't remember anything they were saying. I would just sit there and draw because, (laughs) you know, I get in trouble. Um, I remember, um, man, was it like fourth grade or somewhere around there, fourth or fifth grade, maybe, maybe it was third grade, but maybe it was like fourth, fifth grade. Anyways, I remember I would, no, it was like third grade. Yeah. Third or fourth grade. One of the, one of those. Yeah. Anyways, I was, I was, I remember, you know, they, you do morning classes and stuff, right? Right. So you, it was back when we only had one teacher and I remember like I would constantly yawn, you know, and I, <laughs> I never asked anybody else if they always yawned in the morning too when they're at school. Right. But I, I, you know, your eyes tear up. So I thought people would see me crying or something. Oh. I think I was crying because I would constantly <laughs> yawn. Like I couldn't stop. And, um, I remember they would always like in the morning, have somebody talk or something, or, you know, do like a book report or I don't know, something like that, where you always had to stand up in class, which I would never do because I was too scared. Okay. And I remember, um, you know, like I would actually make my eyes go cross-eyed because not at them, not right. at anybody, but because I thought, and I would look up and down because I thought that would like dry up my eyes or something, you know, so I wouldn't look up. Oh I was my crying. gosh, you're so funny. And I remember <laughs> getting in trouble and, and, you know, the person up front calling me out and saying, saying, Mr. I think it was the name was Mr. Reed, if I remember correctly. Um, and they were like, Dan, Daniel, at the time they're calling me Daniel, Daniel's crossing his eyes, making faces at me or something like that. You know, <laughs> it was this little girl. You're like, I'm just trying to keep my eyes. I don't open. remember what I, I wasn't going to admit that. Of course. But yeah. I don't remember what I was saying, but that was just like, you know, it's something I remembered that, you know, like I would just constantly be tired and constantly just like be distracted and, 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 you yeah. know, unfocused and just uncomfortable because mm-hmm. I never wanted to speak you know, in front of the class. Um, and as you know, as you know, we're doing this podcast and people are listening to this. I've, I've done many webinars online with hundreds and thousands of people listening, mm-hmm. um, you know, YouTube videos, um, spoken at, at live events with hundreds of people there. Um, heck, I mean, we even spoke at, you know, one of Tony Robbins events with thousands of people there. Yeah. Um, I think there was like 10,000 people there. And I've always been afraid to speak in crowds, but yet, you know, I still am fearful of it, but you know, I I follow that leap first and let the net appear. That's right. And I just go, well, oh, well, it's like jumping in, you're in there. (laughs) So be scared while you're in there. (laughs) uh, But as long as you do that, you know? Well, that's one thing it's, you know, you were talking about speaking to people and I know, um, you know, being someone that's very sensitive or empathic, you know, the people that I have met, and there's many that have these qualities, there is this part of them that really wants to help, you know, help people in their life, help people in the world. And oftentimes, they're kind of like silent warriors, I'd say, you know, maybe don't put themselves out there a lot, or maybe they do um, in, like you were saying, like in smaller crowds and things like that. But I know for you and I, um, especially you with your business, you have reached beyond that, that fear of, you know, maybe your, your sensitivity, sensitivity comes up that makes you feel fearful to like reach out to large groups of people, but you've been able to find a way to do that in your life where you can help people and, and connect with people on a large scale, um, yeah, and, it's still there. Yeah, it, it's, it's, still it's there. always going to be there. Yeah. Well, I can't say always because I haven't, you know, reached the end of my life. I, right. I guess I'll tell you at the end of my life, <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> but um, yeah. it will. It's it's been there. Um, the only thing is that it you don't feel it as much right. because you've taken you've you've pushed through it so many times that. It's like you listen to it less. It doesn't happen less. You just listen to it less. Or maybe it does happen yeah. 
less, but you know, knowing that it just gets easier and easier and easier. It's kind of like, you know, like anything else in life, you know, it, it, it might feel difficult at first, yeah. but you get better and you get better and you get better and you get better and you yeah. just keep doing it. That's right. You know, and sometimes it'll feel really strong and you'll be like, whoa, this sucks, you know, and you just keep moving forward. Yeah. You just remember the times that you did overcome it and you just keep moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. And I know we didn't we didn't touch on this, but one thing that I wanted to to share with you guys is that more and more there are people, you know, stepping into this this sensitivity in their life and maybe you didn't even feel it as much before, but all of a sudden it kind of, you know, comes up in your life or there's also a lot of children nowadays that are being born that are empathic. And the reason that we're seeing in large numbers, people having this type of, of emotional quality and sensitivity is because planet Earth, there's a lot going on on this planet. And humans are having to evolve on a, you know, very quickly and on a very large scale. And so just naturally by evolution, we have to change. And we've touched on this before. It's not like our physical body necessarily is changing, but it's emotionally and what's happening with with our our brain function and, and things like that. And so really the way that I like to think about it and, and the way that I understand it um, is that People like this are needed in our world that, you know, the sensitive people so that we can positively help to change the world and move things in a, a really good direction. You know, we have enough negative stuff going on, enough, uh, you know, challenge and fear going on. So we, you know, we need, uh, you know, well, what I like to call is like light warriors, right? I mean, yeah. people that are, that in a sense, wear their heart on their, what's what's the expression? Wear their heart on their- On their sleeve? On their, something like that, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah I've heard, <laughs> I've that, heard that before. I've heard that before, but it was just the first thing that came to mind, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. it, it, this this world is becoming so, I don't know if I'll, I want to say the word overpopulated, but right. we, we, we're getting more and more people in this world. So yeah, I mean, it, it's needed. It's kind of like, you know, you get stuck on an elevator, you know, and mm. you let's say you're in there with 10 people, you know, out of those 10, there's going to be somebody in there that is, you know, somebody that's an empath or somebody mm-hmm. that's, you know, that, 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 you know, is caring. And they're going to be like, oh, well, we're stuck on this elevator. It's been an hour. You know, I've got some water. I've yeah. got some peanuts. I've got, uh, a, you know, a bar, you know, yeah. a, a snack bar. So let's all share it, you know, yeah. opposed to the person that's like, you know, hoarding it to themselves <laughs> and not telling anybody and then, you know, reaching back and then just taking a nibble so that nobody else sees. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of that going on on this planet right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's been enough of that. So we we need more people that are willing to share, yes. willing to help yes. others. And yeah. and you're right, there are more people being born into this and being, uh, I guess, woken up into it yeah. as well. Something yeah. that maybe is, has probably been within them, but they kind of like drowned it out because they wanted to, like, not so much wanted to, but you know, felt they had to fit in. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and be normal and be like everybody else. I mean, you hear the, the people that say that, like, stop being so sensitive, you know? <laughs> I mean, heck, we even say to our daughters, stop being so sensitive <laughs> when we joke. Yeah. You know, we're, we're like, you know, teasing each other and yes. stuff like that, which she's learning. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we, we need more people that are, are that way, that, yes. that are more sensitive to others and helping others. And also, um, being sure that we, you know, if, if, whether you are considered an empath or a highly sensitive person, um, you know, you're not off the hook either, you know, you need to help those people that you can identify as that, you know, to help them, you know, flourish yes. into becoming what they need to become Yes. instead of, you know, telling them like, stop being so sensitive about you know, life or whatever. And again, I'm not talking about like little jokes and stuff like that. But I mean, like if if they are somebody that that has trouble in crowds or has trouble being around a lot of people, you know, or you're trying to force them into, into, you know, into being somebody that they're not, Yeah. you know, don't do that, you know, just because you feel that they should do something, but they're not really meant for that. Then, Or just because it looks different than what, we quote unquote call the norm, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, for me, I mean, 
I know that, you know, as we were actually writing up this, I was trying to think of some, you know, some ideas and, or not some ideas, but I was, was kind of reminiscent in a way too, like remembering just how hard it was for me in crowds. And, um, and I remember, you know, like, like going to, um, to, to nightclubs and, and bars and nightclubs, uh, with friends and stuff. They're like, Oh, let's go, let's go party and stuff like that. And they would just like let loose and just have a great time. And man, I would just feel stressed out in there. Oh. I'd feel very judged. I feel energy. I'd feel kind of grossed out. I'd feel icky. And, and I just had the hardest time being in those nightclubs and I, but I tried so hard, you know, like I'd even like, you know, drink right with everybody else. Yeah. I'd be like, Oh, I'm going to, you know, grab two. My thing was, and you remember this, I grabbed two Long Island iced teas chug and, them. I, and I'd, you know, I'd, I'd, well, I wouldn't chug them. I'd, I'd slurp them because they came with a straw. So <laughs> I like slurp them you, up. You drink them pretty fast though. <laughs> I did. You know, that was my thing. I just drink both really quick so I can, you know, have yeah. that drunk feeling. And, mm-hmm. and, and if you remember, um, you were with me. I believe you were with me, but I remember telling you about it that when people said like, like I haven't had a drink in, I don't know what. Oh my gosh. Uh, like, I mean, 11 years or something like more that. More than that. Something I mean, like, at yeah. least, at least like 12, 13, 14. Yeah. Something like that. Years, yeah. 15 years, maybe. I don't know. Somewhere around there. And the last time, and people always say like, well, why don't you drink? You know? And I remember like I, I I tell them the story of like when we were at a nightclub and I had uh, two Long Islands and then I even had some more. People were like you know, handing me drinks yeah. left and right. And I remember feeling very weird. Like I went to the I went to the restroom. I had to go to the restroom. I couldn't keep myself standing straight, basically. You know, like I was I, I was in a drunk body is what it felt like. Okay. But mentally, I was 100% there. So I felt like somebody was controlling my body and I had no control over my body, but I was sitting there 100% like alert and knew what was going on. And I was like, Ugh. this sucks. It was yeah. scary. Yeah. It was scary because I was completely aware of everything around me. I, I was not drunk in my head one bit. And it freaked me out. And I said, you know what? No. Right. <laughs> Cause you know, why would I want to get drunk so I can like walk around like, <laughs> like impaired and right. not be able to stand straight. This makes, yeah, this is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember telling uh, Guru Singh this and I remember he told me that, you know, at that point um, he had said something like, you know, that you had reached this level where, you know, that, you know, people will tend to get drunk or do drugs or, you know, do those kind of substances to kind of get like a sneak peek, sneak peek at you know at, at their their what was it their future their future lives or something like that or, it was like another or being or experiencing like a higher level of consciousness yeah yeah, yeah that's what i meant yeah, yeah. A higher level of yeah. consciousness a different level of consciousness a higher level of conscious it was like a sneak he said it was like a sneak peek like a trailer yeah of like your future lives and yeah. your future consciousness and stuff like that and he said but you had taken yourself you were now higher than any drug or alcohol or any any other substance could take you. Yeah. So there was yeah. no more sneak peeks for me. It was actually the opposite effect. Yeah. And I was like, wow. So when you drank or, you know, did anything like that, it actually brought you down in a way instead of yeah. bringing you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. So it was like, it was really crazy. And I, yeah. you know, I didn't get this explanation for many years after this happened. So I'd always wondered like, what was that? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that was really interesting to, to get that, but you know, to, to, to kind of pull back and to, to get back to what we were talking about where the trouble with crowds, I mean, you've seen this firsthand, like when we're having like a family uh, get together or, you know, birthday party or anything like that. Um, I will like remove myself from the party. Yeah. And, you know, I'll, I'll be there for, you know, let's say like 20 minutes, a half an hour, even an hour and talk and, you know, socialize and just, you know, smile and have a good time. I'm having a good time. Yeah. But I reach this point before I get to this point where I know I'll, I'll hit this wall. Right. All of a sudden you disappear. I disappear. 
I go, you know, hey, yeah. I'll be back and, and I'll just disappear and I'll go in my room. Yeah. I'll go in my office or, you know, if we're not at home, I'll like walk off and go to the restroom or mm-hmm. walk around wherever we are and I'll kind of just relax a little bit. Yeah. Just kind of be alone or away and sometimes just talking to one person, mm-hmm. you know, um, or even two or three or whatever, depending on how many people, you know, like if it's a big event with hundreds of people or thousands of people, then yeah, you know, two or three people is, is, a, is a welcome change right, <laughs> to, right. those, to those hundreds or thousands of people. And, uh, and I need to do that. And sometimes, you know, I'll do it for like five minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour mm-hmm. is usually about it. Um, I know at our family get togethers where my mom and, you know, and our family members where they would like, sometimes people come in like, why are you, why are you like, you know, you know, uh, closing yourself off from yeah. everybody or, or what are you doing? Come back out there and socialize. And, Your mom would be like, you're being rude, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. You know, well, she doesn't do that anymore, but yeah, you know, back yeah. then, back then. Yeah. And, um, and I would just say, you know, I'll be out there in a couple minutes, you know, I just yeah. need a little me time. Yeah. It's interesting too, because for me, I never used to have to do that, but over the past like year and a half, I've noticed, and I think it's from just all the you know, growing I've done and, and yoga that I've done, I've reached a, a higher level of sensitivity where now when I'm in crowds, periodically I have to go outside and I need to go like stand on the grass. And it was so cool because I was talking to one of the moms at my daughter's dance studio and we were, we happened to have gone to a Christmas party for my daughter's dance studio. And there was a lot of people in a small space. And the next day her and I were talking and I said, oh my goodness, you know, I started to get a little overwhelmed. And she's like, me too. And she's like, I had to go outside, take my shoes off and do some earthing. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, someone else talked about earthing, you know, it was like so nice. cool to hear her say that she had to do that. And I I, I felt like I could relate, you know. Um, totally. That was pretty neat. Yeah. Nice. But something else came to mind uh, that I know co- has come up a lot for myself and even yourself so oftentimes people that are empathic, they are really affected by media, by by movies like violence um, I know, or scary movies, things like that. I know yep. I used to be able to watch scary movies or like fighting movies. Um, but now, well, it's, it's kind of funny because I can still watch things like Game of Thrones and there's a lot of fighting and violence. But for some reason, that doesn't affect me the same because <laughs> it's like fantasy, you know? Because well, there's dragons. Yes. I'll t- anything with dragons makes it better, you know? <laughs> but if I'm watching like war movies and, and things like that, oh, I, I can't do it anymore. Like, you know, you're like, I'm going to watch this movie without you because I know you can't watch it. <laughs> yeah, they so, some movies do affect me more than others. Um, the action movies, um, you know, the the fighting movies and things like that, they don't really bother me. Okay, I mean, yeah. to the point to where I, I would say like, oh, I I, I can't do that. Yeah. Um, yes, of course they do affect me, but um, and as you know, I get more aggressive <laughs> if I'm watching <laughs> them. And then like if you if you like say something to me, I'm like like stop, you know, I'll get like very especially if we're watching it late at night, but, um, but I'm able to handle that. It, yeah. It's kind of like junk food in a way, you know, okay. like, uh, you know, one, not that I'd eat a Twinkie, but I, I guess one, um, vegan cupcake for us is right. <laughs> it's, it's going to maybe make, make me, maybe I'll feel like a little acidic afterwards or it might, you know, wire me for a couple hours, but it's a difference between eating one, you know, uh, a week or one a month, uh, versus like, one every half hour, you know, yes. <laughs> or, yes. or 10 at once, you know, then you're going to feel really sick. <laughs> um, but I, I do know that like scary movies for me, like horror, horror movies, mm-hmm. um, definitely I cannot really watch anymore. Yeah. yeah. And especially like the haunted house ones. No, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. None of those. <laughs> oh, what was that one that we watched? The paranormal activity. Oh yeah. And in that movie, they, there's this like, I don't know, dark being or something. And they're like opening the cabinets in the middle of the night. And so we watched that movie a few years back. And my husband for a few nights would open up the cabinets <laughs> in our in our kitchen. And I'd walk out there like in the middle of the night to get like a drink of water or something. I'd be like, 
done. Like, oh my God, the, the cabinets are open. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't do it as many times as you thought I did. Um, right. Because your brother was staying with us and that's something he does without even thinking. He just leaves them open. Don't you not. remember? Oh Steven, yeah, he did. He did. He does. He did. And that would make you so angry, but you, you would like complain about it. But then after seeing paranormal activity, then you like started blaming me or whatever. You like scream. I'm like, I didn't do that one. But you know, after that I was oh. like, okay, fine. I will open some then. You're going to blame me. <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't have talked about that movie now. Now I'm scared. Yeah. Okay. Let's now, change the subject. Now you're going to be freaked out. <laughs> yep. Well, before I get into, I have some some things that that we can use in our daily lives to help balance out, uh, you know, our, this this experience of of being more sensitive. And uh, do you have anything else you wanted to share before we get into? Yeah, that? no, I, I think that's a perfect uh, time to talk about that. Okay. And one thing I would mention though is that uh, we were reading a little bit about like what other people had written about empaths and uh, and highly sensitive people, and there was like. Some, some things that were very similar, and then there were some things that, that were kind of different, and they had that spectrum. What's important for you to understand is that, is that it doesn't really matter what you label yourself, because you know the, the truth is just knowing that you're sensitive or highly sensitive, or you know, or you're this empath, any of those things, that there are things that are going to help balance you out. And it just matters um, how much you need to balance yourself out. Right. You know, like maybe earthing, you only need to do it like once a day, right? Or once a week. I mean, we recommend it more often, but yeah. some people might need to do it like every hour, every, you know, if they're in crowds or if they work yeah. somewhere that they're around a lot of people or if they have to drive in traffic, that might be the time that, you know, you're listening to relaxing music while you're driving Maybe not try and, you know, swerve in and out of traffic and just, you know, give yourself an extra 10 minutes or five, 10 minutes of drive time. So you don't have to stress yourself out trying to drive in the fast lane, just get in one lane and stay there and listen to some relaxing music, get there 10 minutes later than you normally would, (laughs) but feel centered and feel good. And then maybe you earth before you go into your, your office, if you work in an office or, or that, that, but the other thing I was going to mention as well as well is knowing that you are this way and no matter what level you're at, it allows you to prepare to be able to overcome this and make it not affect you as harsh and to get through it easier. It's kind of like knowing that, oh, where I'm going, I'm traveling to, there's snow. Right. So because there's snow, I'm driving up to the mountains and is there snow? Yeah, there's snow. I just watched the weather report. Okay, well, great. Now I know I need to either put chains on or have a four wheel drive with snow tires and I need to bring cold, you know, clothes. I need to bring a big jacket and I need to bring all the stuff that's necessary for a snow trip opposed to just without even looking you know, just packing some shorts and driving your convertible with the top down that, you know, that you leave the top, you know, cause it's one of those soft top, hard tops. Like we used to have with the Mercedes, Oh gosh, <laughs> the uh-huh. SL where you leave the hard top at home <laughs> and then you just have the soft top yeah. and you'd be freezing <laughs> the whole way up there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's knowing that you're somewhere around there mm-hmm. and that there are things that you can do that can help. Yes. And also to recognize that being sensitive in this way is, it's not a curse or anything. I mean, it can be a challenge at times, especially when you're learning about yourself and figuring out what works for you and what doesn't work. But this is actually meant to be a blessing being, being able to, to be intuitive and, and sensitive and, you know, be, I mean, I mean, this is really what, what this world needs. And so, you know, I think with it comes individual gifts that you'll discover within yourself of, of um, you know, as you begin to grow and, and things like that. But yep. And I don't believe you have yeah. to be fully born into it. No, I don't um, think so That either. you can actually develop. Yeah. Um, because I think it's within everybody yeah, to, to, to. to feel this, to be this way. And there's, like I said, there's different levels Mm -hmm. and opening yourself up to it 
will allow you, you know, to those gifts as well. And it is a gift. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm able to use it in my business and my life and my relationships with others, um, in every aspect of my life. And it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And some of the things that I love to use in my life. Okay. This is like, I would say the number one important, um, thing that I use and I use it every morning and I'm, I'm, actually going to be implementing it more in my daily life, especially like right before I leave the house and like when I get home. Um, There's two different ways of doing this. This is called like a, I mean, one way of of calling it is like a a psychic cleansing. You're, you're, or a, um, you're protecting your body, right? Through like your energetic field. And so it's kind of, kind of like a, a silent meditation, but you're focusing on something. And what it is, is like, you know, for me, like, I really love to communicate with angels, like, especially like Archangel Michael, who is, you know, the, like, the angel of protection. And so if that resonates with you, you can call upon your angels or your guides or whatever it is you resonate with to help, help you to let go of or remove any energies, any any feelings that are not yours or that do not serve your highest good. And what I like to do is I imagine them and I I feel the energies or the feelings leaving my body. And I imagine that my angel is like taking them away. And for me, what I like to do is I, I see my angels bringing it, bringing that energy to the earth and it turns into like, good energy or, you know, beautiful energy that helps the the earth to grow. And so I, I'm really visual. So those kind of things work well for me. Another way of doing it, which is maybe a little more simple, is you imagine there's like this vacuum and it's just sucking out any of those unwanted feelings or energies that aren't yours. And then you're, once once you feel like they're gone, then you see white light filling those spaces where the energy was taken out, or you could even fill your whole body and, you know, keep practicing this. And I mean, when I started doing it, I noticed like immediately the difference. And I was just telling Dan today, I'm like, I should do that every time I come home (laughs) because it feels so good. Yeah. I like to actually uh, call into the divine, Mm -hmm. you know, so that's just another way it's calling to divine God, whatever you want to call it, uh, the universe, the Mm -hmm. multiverse. And, and I just go in, you know, to the galaxy, basically, you know, out and out of this world, out of this atmosphere into, you know, the stars. And, um, and I, you know, I use that white light. The white light is like a cleansing light. Yeah. So, I mean, it, however you want to do it. Exactly. There's no right or wrong way. Exactly. There's no right or wrong way. And you're going to figure out what works for you, but it's the same idea. You know, it's, it's all the same idea. Um, another one, um, is doing like a chakra cleansing meditation. And I, you know, that's an, I could make a guided meditation for that and put it up on our site. Let's do it. And that's uh, basically just balancing and cleansing the different energy centers in your body. And, and that just, you know, that helps to generally just make you feel good and balanced. Um, Another one that I love to do in times where I've been in large crowds is I come home and I get into the shower and I sit in the shower and let the water just fall on me for like 10 minutes. And I like to just experience and feel like just the, you know, the day just like coming off of me, right? Just like letting it go. That's really therapeutic. Uh, Because, you know, water, water is very healing. So give that a try. Yeah, I used to love doing that when I was younger. Like I would just take like half an hour, hour long shower. Yes. I remember. <laughs> because of it. Because I didn't <laughs> I you know you that. because I didn't know I wasn't doing yoga or meditation or anything like that. Right. Um I don't really take showers like in the evening um unless I really needed it then I would. When I say really need I'm, not that I'm smelly, but <laughs> <laughs> that I felt like man, I do need to, you know, wash this all this negativity off me. But I usually don't let myself get to that point. Yeah. So because of that, it's not necessary. You know, but if I do, yeah, I'm definitely ending with a cold, a cold uh, shower at the end. (laughs) But that is something that's highly needed in the morning for me. 
Yes. If I don't take my morning shower and and end with like, you know, three minutes cold. Well, to be honest, I mean, it's usually a minute and a half to two minutes. <laughs> it should be three minutes. I've done three. But, you know, if I don't end with that cold, yeah. man, my day is different. Yeah, me too. It is way different. Yeah. It's way more yucky and all that. I hear a lot of people say, I can't do that. I'm like, don't give me that excuse. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, also. Because I couldn't either. <laughs> but also, I don't. I don't deal with, if if I had to deal with more negativity in my life, then I would have to do more. Right. Um, But, you know, fortunately, very blessed, um, positioned myself, you know, it wasn't always this way. I had to actually create this without even realizing what I was creating. I had to create this, you know, this, uh, this, this perfect, you know, this perfect, uh, what do you, what do you call it? Like situation or like business our, or, oh, or a certain oh, oh, type right, of right, environment right. yeah environment like the perfect yeah. like environment uh in- incubator for myself yeah. <laughs> to where you know it's like it's a clean room yeah. in my life you know yeah i still have to deal with stress i still have to deal with with some negativity but man yeah you know the the amount is like so small yeah it's like maybe one or two percent yeah, which Boy, is, that's so, I hadn't even thought about that. That's that's true because you know most people have to go into a work environment, and uh, you know you don't know who you're going to come across, and you're working with probably some people you can probably think of right now. You're like, oh, those people are always negative or are <laughs> always, you know. Well, yeah, and we even <laughs> talked about that in. Um, I think it was like uh, we talked in a couple places. I think one of them was episode thirteen, love your haters. Oh yeah. Um. And I think we also talked about it in, um, let's see, did we talk about it? I think we talked about episode 10, your words create your reality as well. Um, well, heck, I actually think, I think episode four as well was love your family and choose your friends. And they, they all kind of, we kind of all talked about it in those that, you know, be careful that you don't take on other people's energy Yeah. that especially, you know, people that are negative and avoid those spiritual vampires um, and if you can't avoid those people because maybe you work in a cubicle with them or you work at the office or you have to deal with them, they're a client or something like that, uh, just limit the amount of time you need to be around them. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe have somebody else, you know, like hire somebody or or put somebody else in charge of that person or whatever you need to do to limit your communication with them. Um, I know I had one person still negative as heck in my life that we were doing business with. And I had to just like, stop talking to him. I said, you know, I just, I just said, Hey, let's just stick to email, you know? Yeah. And, and that worked out a lot better. So yeah, that really helped. So being able to do something like that and then putting somebody else in charge is one thing I did as well is we, we have some staff now and I just said, Hey, this, you know, I need you to talk to this person. And whenever you tell me what they need, um, clean it up for me. So I don't, I don't hear their negativity, you know, <laughs> Nice. <laughs> like filter it, be my filter. That's yeah. what you're for. I hired you to be my filter. And we've done that, you know, where we like, even like Facebook comments or YouTube comments or, you know, any, any kind of comment or in our, on our help desk support desk, you know, anytime somebody says something negative, we, we have it filtered before it reaches us. <laughs> so oh, that's a not, great idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. And there's two more things that I have here that you can use. So we, I, I, I said how water is very healing. Well, specifically salt water is really good at, at pulling out toxins and, and that, you know, like any negative vibes going on. So either swimming in the ocean or taking a bath with sea salt. That's I, I love that. I do quite a bit of that. Is and, that the same as Epsom salt then too then, or would that be different? You know, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I need to look because I, I actually have a specific one that's like a sea salt bath. Yeah. Um, we'll make a note of that then and we'll, yeah. we'll put like a little recipe down there for you. Yeah. Below the yeah. show notes. And I usually put in some lavender essential, you know, or different types of essential oils too, but lavender's super relaxing, especially for at night. And the last one... Uh, you know, you know, it's, it's been a few years now I've been using gemstones, like crystals and things like that. And 
Um, if you haven't, I encourage you to to do a little bit of reading about it because stones, each stone has a different quality and, and is good for different purposes. And so you can use different gemstones by like you can place them in your hands and just sit and relax and or you can like place them on your body and they absorb your, you know, the excess energy. And what you do then is after you've used the crystals for a few minutes or whatever, a few hours, whatever, you, however long, to cleanse them, there's a few different things, but my, my favorites are either to place it in salt water overnight um, or to leave it outside in the sunlight for the day and then the moonlight uh, for the evening. And that helps to recharge your gemstones. And yeah. Well, I know like my, uh, my energy beads that I had uh, said to also you could put them in dirt. Oh yes. You know, that was like the other soil. thing. Yes. You can put them in the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Like in a plant, even in a plant stones. soil or something like mm-hmm. that, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, do you have anything else to add before we get to our rock star mission? Um, one, one other little tip I, I would actually like to add yeah. that I had made a note about, and I thought this might help some people as well that have, you know, challenges with like travel. Like, as you know, I hate to travel. <laughs> I haven't done it in a while now. I mean, it's, it's been like over a year since I think I've had to travel anywhere. Yeah. Um, and I've never had to travel, um, but we chose to because it was good for our business. And I'll probably have to start doing it or it'd be a good idea to start doing it a couple more times um, coming up. But I used to travel quite a bit and I could not stand doing it. I hated it. It, it was like the hardest thing for me. I'd get off the airplane and I'd, I'd get to my location and I would just feel wiped out. I felt like yeah. I felt like I just like was on a, on a ship or something for for six months. Yeah. You know, <laughs> tra- traveling across the world and I felt seasick. And, and it was like three hours. Legs. And yeah, it was like an hour and a half flight or two hour, three hour flight to like, you know, Dallas or something like that. Or or the longer wow. ones were like Florida, you know, from California to Florida. It's like like seven hour trip or something like that, something like that. And plus the hour to drive to, you know, to the to LAX so you can get a direct flight, which would suck as well. But one thing that helped for me was preparing, you know, I got better at preparing for it. And some of the things I would do is I would pack as much, you know, like dry food and bars and and everything that, that, you know, that, that I had with me at home that made it easier, you know, for me to have snacks and things like that. I would bring those things. I would bring like any electronics that, I mean, people would joke around and say, they call me like radio shack. Cause I like had every adapter, microphone, everything that you could need, yeah. <laughs> even though I didn't need it, but I, it just made me feel more comfortable having it with me. So I would pack that as well. Um, and then I would also, um, what I would do is I would hire if it's a, if it was an event, especially, um, if it was just me and my partner or something like that, then, um, then I, I wouldn't usually, but if it was like a, a group of us or anything, like even like five of us and we're doing like a mastermind or something, or an actual event, I would always, always hire an assistant for those, you know, three or four days that we were there. Yep. And, um, and it wasn't even that much. I think we'd pay like a hundred dollars a day or something for a few hours and we would hire somebody local and they would actually travel and, or they would buy all my food, run errands, anything I needed, they go, would go out and get for me, which was awesome. It like, it made it it made it more of a fun trip in a way too, yeah. because now I didn't have to go get any of that stuff. I didn't have to focus on anything else. And the cost of that was in a lot of cases cheaper than even renting a car and then having to deal with renting oh, a car. Cause right. renting a car is a whole nother deal because now you need to go get it at the, at the airport. Then you, the worst part, dropping it off. Yes. Cause a lot of airports you drop it off and you have to be like an hour earlier or half hour earlier because you know, like, I forgot which airports it was, but um, I remember you'd have to get on a bus and the bus would take you ba- you know, to your terminal. It was like, it was a long ordeal. So you never know how long it was going to take. So it would just make things a lot easier. So in other words, prepare for it, you know, like, and, and, and make it, make it something more fun, you know? Yeah. So that way, you know, like I was able to like order out, you know, three times a day if I wanted to, I was like, Oh, Hey, go That's pick so up cool. this. 
go pick me up an acai bowl for breakfast on your way in, you know, uh, go, go pick up lunch at this, uh, this other vegan restaurant that I'd never, cause you know, i have try new places. I go on happy cow, the app and I go, Hey, th- this looks like a cool place. Can you pick up, pick me up this and then dinner, pick me up this, you know? So it was, it was really fun. And then you weren't as exhausted too. Cause you weren't running all over the place yourself. You could just, yeah. like you were saying, you could just focus on what you needed to focus on. Well, yeah. And you can and bring stuff with you that makes you feel at home. That yeah. was another point I was bringing up and, and uh, I would actually, a lot of times, like we went to uh, to Austin, Texas to go meet with, with a, now call him a friend, but at the time I didn't really know him. Uh, ben, my partner, had actually introduced us to, uh, to Jesse, who was in one of his masterminds and really great guy. He had just moved into this really beautiful house in the Austin Hills and, uh, or mountains, I don't know even what you call them. But yeah, so like I had, <laughs> he had just moved in there. So he like had air mattresses and stuff for, for you know, for guests. So I ended up ordering like a bunch of stuff on Amazon, like uh, a fold out, one of those folding, the ones that we use, the fold out mattress type things. Right. Yeah. And I, I bought some of those. I ordered my buckwheat pillows. Pillow. I ordered uh, <laughs> a, a yoga mat. I think um, I ordered a, a couple other things. So I had everything that, that made me feel more comfortable, you know, there. And of course, all that stuff I left there, I was like, here's a gift. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I made it feel good too. You know, mm-hmm. whenever you leave, you just leave gifts. <laughs> you, you remind me of like the kids, like when they go places when, you know, well, not all of them. They're not Kaylee. She's getting older, but like they bring their blankies. So did yeah. you bring your blankie? Too? Yeah. My, my blankie is all those <laughs> things. Heck, whenever I travel to my, my partner's place in, in Texas, I think I ordered like a, um, what was that? The, uh, the tea, the tea thing. That oh, heats up the, tea. the kettle. Thing, yeah, the yeah. tea kettle thing that heats up the the electric one, you know, yeah. that heats up itself. So I ordered another one of those. Had it delivered to his house from Amazon. Ordered a bunch of like uh, oatmeal, organic oatmeal from Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I ordered a ton of things and had a, a yoga oh mat, uh, a steel mace to work out with when I was at his place, and I lo- oh, so wow. I left all that stuff there, which he didn't like because he's like very very neat freak. Like. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I'd have to pack it away for my next, my next trip right. so I could use it. That's so funny. So that's it. That's all I got before we hit up our rockstar mission for today. Nice. But we want to remind you to go to rockstarinlife.com, um, you know, for links to the resources mentioned in this episode, this episode's transcript, download the free books, training, yoga, meditation, homeschooling advice, and so much more that we are adding every single week. Go to rockstarinlife.com and join the Rockstar in Life revolution today. So today's Rockstar mission if you choose to accept, which we hope you will, and we believe you will. That's right. If you are one of these sensitive empaths or highly sensitive or just a sensitive person, or you're aspiring to be a sensitive person, (laughs) then we want you to prepare for those times when you know they're coming up, whether it be an event, whether it be, you know, your, uh, um, a, uh, what is it called? A family get together or a party or work even, your daily routine, you know, make a list of three to five things that you can do to make yourself feel stronger and prepare for those. Just like we talked about, if you have a snow day, you travel in the mountains where there's snow, you would pack for that day. You would prepare for it, hopefully. So same thing goes here is we want you to prepare for it. So three to five things to make yourself feel stronger. That could be yoga, it could be meditation. It could be earthing. It could be hiring help like we talked about, sitting in your car and listening to something positive, whether it be music um, or our podcast, um, an audio book, relaxing music, paint, draw, watch a funny movie, do something you love to do that makes you feel good and get you into the right state and combine these things, change it up, right. make it a menu yes. of fun stuff and good stuff for you. Yeah. And even, and try doing some of these things when you come home, like let's say you've had a particularly stressful time or you were 
in a large crowd or at a big event, try some of these things when you get home and see the difference between how you feel when you first walked into the door or walked into the door, walked, walked, into the walked door. through Boom. the door. <laughs> After you put some ice on your head. <laughs> no, no. After you get home and walk through the door <laughs> compared to how you feel after you do those things, you know. <laughs> yep. And if you, if you're not, if you're aspiring to become sensitive and, and to do a lot of these things, um, you know, whether you are or aren't, um, I was also going to mention that um, if you know someone, which I'm sure you do, that has been struggling with this, um, that they are a sensitive person and, you know, whether they've learned to master it or they're going through it and they're starting to understand it or they don't. Maybe they're, they're, you know, having trouble with it. Maybe they're drugging themselves, you know, taking medication or, you know, drinking or doing, you know, illegal drugs or things like that. It could be a loved one, your significant other, your own child, your own kid, a parent, a family member, or a friend, you know, share this episode with them. Also give them your support, help them come up with some ideas and know that they're not alone and that there's nothing wrong with them yeah. and they don't need to try and fit in or fix themselves, you know, that they just need to understand that they are sensitive. They are an empath or highly sensitive or whatever name or level you want to give yourself yeah. and that there is a way through it. And the only way through it is to learn to master it, which is, you know, doing these things that we're talking about. That's right. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to add? Nope. That's it. Perfect. Well, guys, this has been so awesome. And don't forget to get out there and be a rock star in your life. And make the world your stage. Thanks for listening to Rockstar in Life, your source for unleashing your inner rock star. For more tips, training, and free stuff, be sure to go to rockstarinlife.com and join the Rockstar in Life revolution today. Thanks again, and don't forget to make the world your stage.